Hi everyone, glory to Jesus Christ. Welcome to part two of Safety in Prison Ministry. This is kind of going to be like the sloppy seconds episode because I got most of what I wanted to say in the first one. So check that out first if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen it. Just a couple other things I thought of uh, over the intervening 24 hours. Um, if you are a woman in particular and you are going into a prison and there's men in the prison, you want to stay as far away from the yard as you can. It seems like, duh, why would I be going near the yard? But at our jail, where I have to go every week, <laughs> I have to walk right past the yard to get in the front door. And it's kind of like a high school situation where they have a track. It's like a quarter mile or third mile track. And then in the middle, they have some exercise equipment, I guess. It's a pretty small yard and there are two metal fences with ra one of them has razor wire one of them has an electrical current and then they also do have like a dark gray mesh screening that gets draped over the whole thing and that's so that the inmates cannot see out very well but they can see out and if they see you they could say some things that maybe you don't want to hear. That's all. So you're not in any real danger, at least. I've never felt like I'm in any real danger. But there, some of these guys really are not the same ones who are coming to church. So they're not really concerned about if they're saying anything to you that's really crude. Or wolf whistling, whatever. So if that bothers you, try to choose another route in. But I don't think that's actually a safety concern. Next. Oh, glory. Yes, okay. <laughs> Visitor badges and hand stamps. So... Every prison I've ever visited, I'm sure someone's going to email me with an exception, but if you're going in as a visitor, you want to be able to get back out. <laughs> to do that, you need to do a couple of things. You're going to get a badge. It's going to be like a plastic name tag, but it's not going to have your name on it. At least mine never do. They just say visitor and they're usually like a bright yellow and you clip it onto your clothing. Okay. You're going to need that to get out the door. You're also going to need an ultraviolet hand stamp. So you're going to get stamped. It's usually on like alternating hands, depending on what week it is. They have this teeny little stamp. I think it says it's a V for visitor or a G for guest, but it, they're going to put it on your hand and you're not really going to be able to see the ink. It might look like a, a pale yellow or something, but what's going to happen is after you do whatever it is you're in there to do, when you want to go leave, you have to put your hand under a ultraviolet light, an ultraviolet light. And if your stamp does not line up, does not light up, that's a problemoid because you could be an inmate, right? So I've had this happen to me once or twice. I've had other people that have been going in with me at the same time happen, you know, like they went to the bathroom or something in between when they signed in and then when they went back to the secure side and they washed their hands and the ink came off. So if you have to do that, don't be afraid to go up to the guard and say, hey, can you restamp me? I had to pee and now I'm worried that I'm going to be spending the night here. Now, it, most cases, like I've never actually gotten arrested for this. I've never gotten detained in the prison for having my hand stamp washed off, but legally they could do that. So what has happened, and actually with the men, it's worse. So there was one time when my buddy Isaac, uh, he either didn't get it stamped or like it washed off, who knows. But for whatever reason, he didn't have the stamp. And so he was hoping to leave that night and the guard at the... You know, the guard who was controlling the egress door was like, and what do you want me to open the door for? Like, yeah, I'm not an idiot. I'm not opening the door. So we were finally able to explain to him, you know, if you can call the front desk and check and see who I am, they're going to vouch for me, which they did. But the guard was really mad. He was like having a bad day or something. He was like, you know, I'm not obligated to do this for you. Like, blah, 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 blah. Like, you missed dinner. You could have had to, you know, stay here until breakfast and blah, blah. It's like, okay, have a nice day. God bless you. But try not to... Try not to tick off the guards. That's another good rule. Don't tick off the guards if you can help it. But it's an honest mistake. It will happen to you at some point. The only time it may not happen to you is if you're visiting a halfway house or a, like a community corrections place, which is where the, the inmates, they're like almost not inmates anymore. They can wear street clothes. They can have a job. Some of them can even have a car. It's pretty crazy. So in that situation you probably just have to sign in and you may have to wear like a photo id or something something like that but no crazy hand stamps probably let's see all oh, right last thing last thing and this is something that i've had to learn the hard way unfortunately you got to be very careful and in my experience this is 
a bigger problem with correspondence ministry. So even if you're not going in there personally, but if you are writing letters, okay. If you write to multiple inmates at the same prison, you have to be very careful. Because they get jealous of one another very quickly. And they get possessive of one another, of you. They get possessive of the people who write them. It's a little bit infantile, yes, but consider their situation. They have no privacy. They get no respect. They have very limited interaction with the outside world. People are going to judge them for decades for the fact that they were incarcerated, no matter if, you know, no matter why they were incarcerated. So they treasure interaction with people who are on the outside who are not, who are not just there to look down on them or judge them or like try to, you know, punish them some more or something. So be honest about it. If, if an inmate asks you, you know, are you writing anyone else? I would say, yes, I am. I don't tell them who. It's none of their beeswax. Thank, fortunately, I've never had anybody ask me who. Unfortunately, what that does mean is sometimes, I, like, there was a guy in Texas who he just wrote me back and he was like, listen, I like you. I think you're really nice, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm kind of thinking maybe I shouldn't write you anymore because there's a couple other guys that you're writing to here. And he was like, I know that you're not here to, you know, find a boyfriend or a husband or whatever. And so it shouldn't be a big deal, but it is a big deal. What's interesting is that every inmate that I write in that prison is on death row. This is the Polunsky unit in Texas. And I did not realize that the death row inmates had that much freedom where they could be passing photographs and letters around. Uh, perhaps they don't and perhaps it happened anyway. I don't know. So I just wrote him back and I was like, you know what? That's totally cool. I said, I'm probably still going to write you notes occasionally just so you know I'm thinking about you. But if you don't write me back, like, I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to be angry about it. You do what you need to do to stay safe there. So now if you are looking for some kind of a relationship, this probably doesn't seem like an appropriate topic for this channel, but it happens. People do this. If you are looking for a relationship, with somebody who is currently incarcerated, you got to be doubly careful about this. Don't, I mean, you should never double time people ever. But if you double time people in prison, you may never have to reap the consequences of that. But somebody there could get killed. And I'm not being dramatic. It's the truth. People get killed in prison for far smaller things than that. So I would advise against that. Um, and also if you're going to write to somebody, it doesn't matter what gender they are or what gender you are either. you got to be real clear. This is not a romantic overture. Got to come out and say that. I thought in the beginning that I could just tell them I'm married. So this is not a romantic overture and that they would be cool with that. But I've discovered that with a lot of these guys, what's happened is if I say I'm married, then they're like, oh, what she really means is well, we're just going to do this on the side on the down low. I don't even know how they got that. But then I have to kind of be a little bit more direct and be like, no, no. But, and just be careful with expressions of affection. That's my last piece of unsolicited advice for tonight. <laughs> be really careful about that. Even if you're in, uh, if your jail or your prison is low security and the people there seem to be kind of mostly having it together, be real careful about hugging people. I'm a hugger. Well, maybe not a hugger, but I, in prison I tend to be a hugger because I feel like these guys need hugs. But that can be misinterpreted as a romantic affection, not a friendship affection. So especially, but not exclusively, if you're if you're doing any kind of opposite gender stuff, be real, real careful with that. But even if it's the same gender, again, any port in a storm, there's a lot of homosexuality in prison. So if you're a woman, you're working with women, that does not mean you can let your guard down because there's still people who may wind up having feelings for you. Uh, either because they really, you know, are gay or just because they're in prison in any port in a storm. So you got to be very aware of that. That's not arrogant, by the way. To say, you know, oh, maybe I shouldn't hug that person because I'm worried about... That's not being arrogant. It's not being egocentric. It's just trying to be safe so that they stay safe. Again, because if somebody sees you hugging, you know, Jill over here and not Mary over there, you know, once they get back on the block, there could be a, a smash-up. And there are regularly. Uh, thankfully, not 
having to do with me, I don't think, but it, this happens all the time. What do you do in prison? You fight. Right. Anyway, I'm over 10 minutes. I gotta go. I hope some of this was marginal in some, like, little teeny-weeny way. And I will see you guys in the next video. It's time for bed. I gotta go to church tomorrow. So, sleep well. Good night. God bless you. Pray for me. Bye.